I think as an entrepreneur, you think no other entrepreneurs could possibly like, do they go through what I go through? Do they have this pressure or stress? Or are they thinking as much with like a ton of ideas and all these things like all the time? And being with an entrepreneur, you see that that is normal. If you think about it in business too, you might not be getting along with your business partner or something like that, but you've got a team that's looking up to both of you. If you're bad mouthing your partner, then it's like, there's a trust. There's something that like, it doesn't, it's not good. What's been the biggest surprise for you being married to another entrepreneur that you're like, hmm, didn't see that coming. Welcome to today's podcast episode of The Trust Doctor, restoring trust and enriching significant relationships. And today I have a woman close to my heart because she does it all. But before we go any further, since I know you're going to love this podcast, make sure you like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe to The Trust Doctor. So today I have a woman whose name even suggests that she is a breath of fresh air. 12 years ago, she started a company called The Draw Shop. Don't Google it. She'll tell you all about it. So stay tuned here. And she started it because she was helping companies share their share what they do, share their mission. And since then, she has become the go-to video production agency. And this woman and her company has done videos for companies that are world, world renowned. And I'll let you tell her about it in one moment. So buckle up because Summer Felix Mulder is about to take us for a ride. Welcome, <laughs> Summer. Thank you so much. That's such a like confidence boost when you hear somebody introing you. I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I know I'm told like people say, can I take you on the road? But I truly feel like your name says it all summer. Like, okay, I don't know anyone that hates summer. It happens to be my favorite, favorite season. Now you're you're in San Diego. So I'm in San summer, Diego. Yeah. yeah. All day, every day. But oh yeah. Anyway, so Summer, tell us about. Just give us a sense of who you are, because you have so many stories. Like, just start with Summer, the woman. Oh, goodness. So I feel like I have 8,000 hats that I wear. Only? <laughs> only. Only. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to whittle them down. Um, yeah. I mean, I am. I I'm just heard this song in the background. Y you wear it well. Yes. <laughs> Don't give up my you. day job. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm you know entrepreneur. Uh, I'm also you know director of marketing and sales. As as I'm also the founder and the CEO and the you know all the different hats in the business. Then I'm a wife. I'm a stepmom. I'm a mom. I'm a you know puppy owner. You may see him walking around in the background, but. You're a friend to many. You are a dear friend to many. Thank you. I have amazing friends. I do. I do attract the right people in my life. I will say that. Um, so yeah, I, um, I'm somebody who is, I'm obsessed with storytelling. I'm obsessed with marketing and messaging. I love working with people who bring tremendous value to the world. And I love helping them express that in a way that gets people totally hooked and understanding what it is that, that they do. So that's, that's where I geek out. I like to do that for my own business. And I like to help, you know, create offers and things that can help other companies do that. And cool. that's, that's pretty much me. I'm mostly, um, I, I try to find my Zen every day. I'm, I don't know. I always think to myself, I must be pretty amusing to watch. I know I am to my husband because I'm like, cleaning the dishes while listening to some personal development podcast while at the same time tripping and falling because I'm very clumsy while at the same time, you know, taking demands from my kids of things that they need last minute. Cause they ask for like 10 different things every day for all their activities. And then, you know, answering Slack and emails. And it's like all these things all at once. And I'm the person that's like, you should you know, uh, organize your time, do, you know, focus on just one thing at a time. And because I know that that works so well. And yet somehow I find myself every now and then like getting into the multitasking. So you're <laughs> bing, 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 bing. yes, exactly. Exactly. Even though I know the value of not doing that. <laughs> 
So, so I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a very funny, funny, very brief, funny story. So, you know, when you do yoga and they tell you, clear your mind, yes. clear your zen, I do my best thinking then. Like I'm supposed to have my mind cleared. I literally want to leave. The, like I leave when the class is over and I write down all the wonderful ideas that I think I have yeah. because I cleared my mind, but I can't just think of nothing. Like I, I honestly... I think you need to be like 13th level Buddhist monk to do that. I know. I know. And Lord knows I'm not even on the first level. So, well, and it's funny because I grew up learning meditation. My mom was a teacher of transcendental meditation. And so she's all about quieting the mind and doing, you know, and she's genius at it. She does it twice a day. She taught it. And it's like, I can, I can do it, but it takes a lot of practice. (laughs) Yeah. And it's a gift to be able to do it. But yeah, I hear you. There's like, Sometimes I'm like, I need my, it's almost like my meditation and my therapy is when I work out. So I have to mm-hmm. work out every day and be active. And that actually is what quiets down all the jibber jabber because now I'm just focused on this one activity. <laughs> and another reason why I'm so, con- I feel so connected to you because the same for me and back in the day, and I'm a little bit more mature than you. I, you know, I'm going to tell a quick story. Wiser. Yeah. I, I was the first girl on my block to wear sneakers and it was a scandal. It was, oh my scandal. gosh, that's hysterical because I was a tomboy, which I'm sure is totally politically incorrect today. Yeah. But I always loved working out because I felt, I didn't know it at the time, but what I felt was rejuvenated, restored. My head was cleared. I was, I could take on, tackle a problem. Um, and it just makes you feel good. And now we know all the neuroscience behind it. Oh, yeah, exactly. But before, but Summer, before you became the drawer shop queen, what what were you doing? What were you up to? What was your career like? So I, so, so I started, let's see, right out of, I'd always been in love with writing. I mean, I was like writing my first book at like 13 years old. I wanted to write. And because again, I loved, I love storytelling and which is why I fell in love with marketing because marketing is storytelling, right? It's, Mm -hmm. it's telling the story of someone it's getting hooked. I I started getting fascinated by like, how, how do people get brands like, or how do brands get people like this loyal following? And I was just always intrigued by it. Not to, that doesn't mean that I was good at it right from the beginning, but I was very intrigued. (laughs) I I learned a lot. Truth be told, I, I, I think it's less than 0.00001% of the population that's good at anything that they try the first time. True. Yeah, exactly. You have to be bad at it in order to become good. At least that's what I think. You have to learn what, what's not working and that's how you get the best lessons. So um, so before the draw shop, during those young years, I got married um, around 25 years old. That was my first marriage. I said earlier, I was, I'm a stepmom. So I'm married to my amazing husband now and we have... Uh, we each have and two he kids. Is amazing. Came together. He is he's amazing. amazing. I met, yeah, I met yes, Michael got last to have dinner with him. Yes. Oh. He's, he's an incredible what a guy. What a yes. great guy. And he's an entrepreneur as well. So my first marriage, we had a, we started an internet marketing company and it wasn't, it was the idea of my husband at the time. And because of that, I learned so much about online. And this was like, right when online marketing became a thing. And it was like, you can sell information Mm -hmm. online. And we rode that wave and it was, it was really successful. And I just learned a lot about copywriting and advertising and how quickly it moves and shifts and, you know, um, doing ads, Google ads at the time. And it was, it was all really fascinating. And we ended up selling that company when we, when we split up. And I was like, I was freelancing. So I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? We've sold this how company. Many, excuse me. How many years were you with your, your first? Oh, so we were, so uh, we were together for eight years, married for four. And we actually split up at the time that I was pregnant with our, with our daughter. And I had a two-year-old son oh. or just about two years old. They're just like literally exactly two years apart. So I was at this point where my daughter then was just born, just sold our company And I had a toddler and a baby girl and, you know, they were so young. So it was mostly, they were with me most of the time, breastfeeding, doing all the the young mom things or young mom of young kids things. And I wanted to do something where I could be at home. And so 
at the time, you know, freelance things just started popping up online. There was like Elance, it's now Upwork. And there were like different sites where you could put out, you know, your resume or apply for freelance jobs. So I was like, okay, well, I'm really good at copywriting. I'm going to do that. So I started um, getting some writing gigs. And through that, I started to meet other people that were, I was like, oh, hey, I kind of know you because we were in the internet marketing world. I, I was, I was lucky to know a lot of people and they would start saying, Mm -hmm. oh, Hey, I need this. Oh, Hey, I need that. So I started doing that because I was like, this is perfect. I can do this from home. I can be with my kids. And that turned into ghostwriting for New York times, bestsellers, ghostwriting for people that like, I used to be like, wait a minute, I watch you on stage and now I'm writing your book. So it was pretty insane. And literally I, I, I just kept saying yes to things, even though there was that whole imposter syndrome thing going on, like, who am I to write this person's book, but I'm just going to, I'm going to do it because this person referred me and I'm going to put together this proposal. So it got to the point where I was writing like four books at a time for these authors. And it was an amazing experience because I got to be on such a personal level with these, you know, it was a lot of, um, business coaches or, uh, personal development uh, speakers and motivational speakers and people that I'd, I'd been following so much of because of my journey going through divorce and, you know, getting, you know, learning like, oh, I'm, I'm not just a mom and I'm not just to this. I mean, I'm, I'm this woman I'm empowered. I'm, you know, I'm just, it was just a cool thing. Wonder woman. Yes. Yes. I was like, oh, it's hard, but it's awesome. I was really stepping out of my shell and starting to, um, you know, do the things that had always been so uncomfortable for me. And, um, it just, every time I did that, it kept that's leading crux, to, and that's, the crux, that's, the, that's the crux of personal development. You yes. have to do what you're not comfortable with. I'm sorry. Exactly. No, exactly. And so I, you know, started saying yes to all these uncomfortable situations and putting myself out there. And it just led to, another relationship with led to another relationship. And all of a sudden I have these relationships with phenomenal people that I get to work with and collaborate with. And one of those, um, you know, somehow one of those relationships ends up me becoming, um, making a really good friend to my, who would be my future business partner. And his name is Eric. And he's who I founded the draw shop with. And we were both working with a mutual client. He was the VP of another company. And I came in as, as a writer, I was, I was going to write for one of their clients. I was also writing all the copy for the infomercial and all this fun stuff. And, um, as, as our friendship developed over a couple of years, he sends me, you know, this, this video, which is this whiteboard animation video. And the way that it was done, I was like, this is incredible. This would, this would do amazing as a video sales letter. And we're like, let's try it. And I'm like, I have a client that I'm working with that I think this would do really well. And we did it and it, it was phenomenal. They were like, you just like doubled the conversions that we were getting before. So then we had somebody else say, Hey, I want one of those. And then somebody else said, Hey, I want one of those. The next thing, you know, you know, I'm, I'm speeding it up, but it did happen pretty quickly. We were like, we got to incorporate. And he was like, I'm, I remember the phone call. I remember standing in my bedroom and him saying to me, I don't know about you, but I want to go all in. I know you still have some books you're writing, but I'm ready to go all in. And I'm ready to resign from my position and, and take this off. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And that was it. I finished up some projects and we went all in on the draw shop and about, he's been in, he's still one of my near and dear friends. Um, and we, we worked at it together for a really long time. And then about two years ago, he was ready to retire. So he's, he's a little bit more mature than me. And, (laughs) and, um, you know, he had asked, I remember a a year before he had asked, he's like, what do you think about taking it over? What do you think about buying me out? And I was like, no, 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 no. You're like one of my best friends and my business partner. No, I can't do this without you. And then as you know, time went on, I could see he was ready to, you know, do some other things. He was ready to retire and, and he was just in a different space in life. And I, and he's like, and you're just so much more passionate about it. And so I was like, okay. And then the timing was right. And, and I took it over and that was about maybe two and a half years ago. Is this with Eric? So together, so let's see, we are, 
we are about 12 years old. So together about nine years, we were in business together. Okay. So yeah. And that's, that's, that's pretty much. Now you're the that's sole owner. Now you're the sole, I am the sole. sole owner. Yes. It feels good, right? The way you said it. It feels really good. I would tell you it was scary. It was really scary at first. And, and then there's, there were moments that were just like, what was scary. You know, it's scary when you're facing certain challenges. You know, we, we would always have each other. We would do this check-in call every single day. And then that was gone. You know, there were things like we, we problem solve together. He was so much more skilled in certain areas than I was. I was more skilled in other areas than he was. And so together we were such this, we complimented each other so well, and we were there for each other. Like if, you know, things were hard or if, uh, I didn't want to have to, I don't want to have to let this one person go on our team. He's like, I got this. I have no problem. You know, it was things like that. That was just nice to have that support. <laughs> And like, and having yeah. somebody who, who just, you know, gets it and, and, you know, just really is on that same page as you. And it, it, it was, it was scary because now it was all on me. Everything was a hundred percent on me. So if something, if a team member wasn't happy or if something didn't go as well, or we didn't have as great of a month as we thought we would have, it's like, it's on me. It was my fault. You know what I mean? It's like, I had to take full responsibility. Well, it was on your watch. I don't know if it was, it was, it was on my on watch. Your, right. It was on right. your watch. And I will tell I will tell you some of though, I, I'm so struck by what you're saying. Cause part of the work that I do is that I work with co-founders, partners and that start companies and they don't do what you just did and they don't do it so well and they don't have complimentary skills. Yeah. So it, it's, it is great to hear that. And then to hear the trepidation, if you will, of when he says, no, you got this. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because my husband would always say, my husband has always pretty much been the sole owner of his businesses. And so he would always say to me, you're so lucky that you have Eric. You're so lucky that you have someone that you're, you're doing it together. And I always was like, yeah, I'm so lucky. And then when that was gone, it was like, oh. <gasps> But you know, the thing is, is that even though I am sole owner, I do, I have my team members that are so invested. And so of course they're incentivized as well, but they're invested and they've been with us for pretty much the whole time. You know, I mean, they've at least been with us for like 10 years and the, I, I do have that with them. I have, you know, in terms of the entrepreneurial uh, support. I have that with my husband because he gets it. He gets what being an entrepreneur is like and owning your own business and, you know, the, the ebbs and flows of, of all of it. And, you know, you start to realize when you, if you, you don't have that, you find a way to get it back. If you know what I mean? And it might not be in the, because I have another business partner, because the funny thing is, is that when I sold it, I had at least five people that asked, Hey, can I come in? Could I, do you want to sell part of your business to me? Could I be a partner? Could I this? And it was like, and I, I would consider, you know, I thought, well, you know, this might be a good thing, but I was like, it's actually really empowering that I'm, I'm the one now, you know what I mean? That like, that, that's, so, that's so it. I, love this. I, I love what you're saying because on the one hand, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready. Push pull. And on the other hand, I got this. And it sounds like Michael played a huge role in that. So let's yes. talk about the entrepreneurial relationship. Cause I have, yes. I haven't just seen the Facebook highlights. Like I've seen you guys in action. I've watched the way you will, you know, touch each other, which is in the nonverbal body language, nonverbal communication. You can, if you, if the listeners ever get a chance to be at an event, to be at a dinner together with Summer and Michael, do yourself a favor and watch how entrepreneurs do it right. So tell us about this journey, because as you know, I work with couples that are entrepreneurs as yes. well. And again, most of them don't do it the way you do it. So, so share that journey, how he's your support. And I'm sure you're his support because I know the listeners here need, need to learn, or we all need to learn. Yeah, I think, um, and how'd you meet? Start with how you met. Oh, how we met. 
you know, it's so funny because we always have a funny story that we share. The interesting part about us is that we actually went to, well, he was, I went to Pepperdine university in Malibu and oh, brainiac. He, brainiac. I don't know about that, but <laughs> he, so he, he was actually there. He's two years older than me. He was there, but he was transferring out the year that I came in. So we just missed each other. And then obviously we took our, our different paths. I have to but, ask where did he go? I have to know where he went to school, where he transferred. So he to. ended up, okay. So he ended up going to USC. Uh, oh, you know, I was going to guess that. Okay. So the university yeah. is spoiled children. Go ahead. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So we um, met, let's see, it was Chloe. My, my daughter was, was a baby. We actually met online on match.com. So I could tell this big before, fun story, but before it, Pepperdine, before, no, Pepperdine. after, no, after, after we were yeah. both divorced, we were both divorced, okay. both had two young kids and that was how we met. So we actually never knew each other at Pepperdine, but we always go, my gosh, we literally just like you were going out. I was coming in. We Got never it. met. And Got he'll it. always say, I wish, you know, he'll say all the time. I wish he's like, Minus the fact that we wouldn't have the kids that we have now. He's like, I really wish we would have met at, at Pepperdine. Cause he's, you know, he's always like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have gotten divorced. We wouldn't have this Of Chris, you never know what would happen. I think, I think, you know, in his mind, it's like, oh, you wouldn't have had the drama of divorce. We wouldn't have had, you know, the back and forth of kids and all that kind of stuff. And it's so nice to think about that. And you know what, in my mind, I think to myself, we probably would have been, we probably would have liked each other then too. I don't think we're that much, we're not much different outside of growing as people. Like we're not much different in terms of values and all that kind of stuff. But um, we met and- um, right, Hang on, Summer, I'm going to jump in with the coaching moment. Yes. If I, not necessarily for you, but for what you said. Many times you will hear people say, I wish I'd met you sooner, or I wished I started the business sooner, or I, what if I took that job? And I very, very much believe that, all of our growth comes through the pain, the trials, the tribulations. And Absolutely. had you not had those, first of all, if you took that other job, you are assuming that that would have worked out swimmingly. You're, you're assuming that. If you started the business sooner, you are assuming you'd be that much further ahead. If if you didn't go through the first poor relationship, you are, well, that's where you learned how to make your mistakes better. Yes. So it's it's really an exercise in fertility to do that. And mo a lot of people will say, I wouldn't want everything that happened to me got me to who I am and where I am today. And I wouldn't want to change it. Yes. So I know, I know you know that. I know Michael knows that. But I think what he's saying is I I wished we didn't have to go through so much fire, you know, baptism by fire to get here. But you know. I think that going through that is what made us so good for each other and yeah. value each other even more, you know, like yeah. we, we really value marriage and relationship and connection and all that much more because of the things that we've gone through. And it also, you know, going through those type things makes it very clear what you want, which mm -hmm. is awesome when you have that clarity. So and, and he'll, he'll end up agreeing, but he, he'll come back to that a lot and go, oh, I just wish this, I just wish that. And it's like, you know, he'll say that I don't, I don't, I don't wish that even though I think, yeah, we probably would have, but you know what, we would have gone through a different set of challenges. You know, we still would have, because we still had to go through those hard growing pains, you know, whether it was mm -hmm. together or before we met each other and we're still going through growing pains, you know, <laughs> always, mm -hmm. we always will, but yeah, he, um, he, entrepreneur when I met him, as was I. And, you know, I think it's, it's really cool. It's really cool to have your spouse as an entrepreneur who, who gets it, like who gets the, the roller coaster of life, you know, and, and it's fun. And it's also knowing that you wouldn't, you wouldn't want it any other way. And there's just, there's, we're still, we're still very different though. He's more of a risk taker than I am. He's not a rule follower. You know, I am like the one, like if somebody has rules, I will, I'll follow those rules out of respect and this and that. And he's like, no, it's okay. We can bend, you know? And, and sometimes he's, it's, he's yellow kind of right. means 
speed up and go through the light. Yes. Yeah, like, yes. You mean stop, right? Yes, exactly. It's like, you know, you walk into a restaurant, they're like, sorry, we're not seating over there. And he'll be the type that's like, go ahead and sit over there. It's not just like, no, they don't want you sitting there. You know, he's just like, but let there's two seats. Let me talk to the waitress. Let me talk but to you. Know. Two seats. But yes. They have yes. A game on them. Yeah. And, and those are the things that have, you know, helped, you know, it's not like he's being disrespectful, but he's like, come on, let's, let's just ask, let's just Try. ask and see if we can, you know, do it. So I know you're only back to where you started from. That's it. Exactly. That's what he'll always say. What's the worst that happens? They say, no, they tell you to leave, you know? And I'm like, okay, you're right. But, um, he's, he's not, he's not afraid of confrontation. He's not afraid to take something head on and he's very, he's very supportive and he gets it. So he, like, he would always say to me, you know, if I was going through, you know, a challenging time, he'd always say, I'm, I'm your sword you, or you've got me, you've got a sword behind your back. That's me. Like, meaning I've always got you protected. I'm, I'm always there for you. And it's such a, it's such a good feeling. While I still believe we've got to be there for ourselves, but it's so, it's such a, it's a very beautiful feeling to have that and know that we support each other and know that, you know, when, if you're having a hard day or you were stressed out, but I didn't, I can be strong for you and vice versa. And we have that, you know, we have that just in being part of a blended family, you know, ups and downs, teenagers. It's like, it can be the most amazing two weeks, everybody's getting along. And then one person gets their heart broken. And now that put that person in a bad mood. And now everybody's and then, and it, it like, you know, implodes. <laughs> But like, well, we, especially when it comes to the kids, like you're only as happy as your least happy kid. Yes. <laughs> right? right. It's so, so true. So how long, so let's, so the entrepreneurial, look, all relationships, all relationships, business relationships, yeah. marriage relationships, friendships, go, go through the roller coaster ride of life, but entrepreneurial relationships by our very nature the highs just seem so much higher yeah. and the lows just seem so much lower. So being with someone that when you're high, you know, you can, you can ground each other in a way. Right. Yes. Um, so, so how long have you been together? How old were the kids? And then take us through that journey. Okay. So we have been together. The entrepreneurial blended family journey. Yes. Yes. So we've actually been together, I think this October, this fall, we'll make it 14 years from when we first met and started dating. And then we've been married. We just had our five-year wedding anniversary. So we took a long time, you know, we took a long time in the beginning, especially with kids and, you know, play dates and they caught on, you know, sooner. They're not dumb. <laughs> they, they started to get it. Even if we weren't holding hands or anything, they were just kind of like, we know you like each other, but I mean, they were young. They were super young. I mean, my youngest was, you know, she was like just over a year old when we just started like, oh, okay, we're going to date, you know, or we're going to, we're going to go out. And it was, she was young. And then, um, you know, they're you all have be custody with your ex. Yes. Yes. So we both did each of us. Alone. Yes, yeah. we did. And we would try to arrange that. So it was, okay, I don't have the kids this night. Neither do I. Great. We can have a date night. Right. And um, yeah, so we took, we took our time and then um, we got engaged and it was another, you know, two years. And then we, we, we planned the wedding, got married. So I'm just curious. I have a question. What I, I think slow and steady wins, wins the race. However, I can help but wonder, was there any hesitation, trepidation. Do I really want to do this again going on? Totally. In the guise of the kids aren't ready. Totally. Okay, I mean, so that was exactly it. And, and it was funny because they were, they were ready before we were right. They were talking about it before we were. And we honestly, it was, it was never a question of, do we want to be together? I think we had, I think we were kind of like, is this really necessary? Is it necessary to get married? Because we did it before we already know this is how we feel about each other. Like, is it something yeah. that we have to do? And at the same time though, we both valued marriage so much why? and why? 
there was something, um, there was something about that, something about this, like commitment, this different level of, and it's not so much about the paper, the, this or the, that it's more about really committing to each other and knowing that you'll be there when things get hard, it's not always going to be sunshine, flowers, and rainbows. There will be hard things. And we know that we want, it's better together. It's better for us to do it together. And we also, for us, it was also the example that we could give our kids of like, you know, you might not have seen what a successful marriage looked like, or, you know, I I hate to use the word success, but you might not have seen, you know, a you might not have seen the way that it could, that it could be. Let's, we'd like to show you how it could be in a healthy way, you know, where we can still have disagreements, but we can, we can, um, communicate really well to each other and resolve those things. Um, Although I will say Summer, from what I understand and correct me if I'm wrong, I have a sense that the two of you, both you and Michael have really given your children the gift of how to have a health, how to be how to have a healthy divorce, how to divorce where it's the poster child for this is how you do it, right? You clearly don't love each other anymore, but I don't think anybody's calling the cops. I'm not saying it's, you know, Nirvana, right? But, you know, I get the sense that if it's a struggle at times, it's a struggle coming from a good place. Yeah, wrong? I, th- I, could be I think- I think that we were very mindful, at least on our side, what we could control in our own household. You know, we can't control what goes on in other households or anything like that. But we were very, very mindful of doing it. You know, I don't know if there's a right way, but doing it the best, most the calm best way. way that we could and not, you know, really being, um, you know, conscious of, what was our stuff to deal with and was not their burden to bear. So Mm -hmm. if we're not getting along with the ex that has nothing and should have nothing to do with them. And it's not to say that that didn't happen, you know, on other, you know, but we did our very best to make sure that that didn't happen in terms of, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to bad mouth the other parents were, um, we're going to do our best to, you know, make sure there's, there's equal time. We're going to get along as best as we can keep things very business-like if there's a tendency to, you know, not get along and things get heated. So, um, I, I, that's something that I feel proud of the way that we have handled it, barring other things that were out of our control. You know, there's sometimes there's, there's, other ways that people might handle things that's out of your control. You can't do anything about that, but I feel proud in the way that we did handle things. I think there's always things that you're like, ah, maybe I would have done that a little bit differently. Maybe I would have, but early on just going through it, my biggest fear was, you know, going through divorce was I don't want this to impact the kids. Like I have, my parents are still married 55 years, something like that. And they are more like 57 years. And I've always felt this unconditional, incredible love from them. And I didn't want my kids to feel any different or any of our kids to feel any different, want them to feel loved. And, you know, that does, that comes from the parents. And if you're bad mouthing each other or saying, you know, negative things, then it's going to affect everybody. I mean, that's kind of even like, if you think about it in business too, right? Like you kind of, you might not be getting along with your business partner or something like that, but you've got a team that's looking up to both of you. If you're bad mouthing your partner, then it's like, there's a trust. There's something that like, it doesn't, it's not good. It's like, you got to deal with that yourselves and not bring it down. (laughs) It goes against the core values of, right? You're a team. Nobody thinks that a team, you know, Moses on, it's not the yellow brick road all day, every day. I think people know that, but I think, um, and even if you're describing your parents, which is amazing, I mean, they must have been married young, I'm assuming, right? And they're yeah. hopefully still blessed with good health, which is which is amazing. But I think um, what our friend Jen Hooty said, yes. and this is what I'm thinking, you know, what Jen says this all the time, how would love show up? Yes. 
he'll say, Hi, can you hear Jen say that? Like, right? totally. Oh, totally. So, Hi, guys in the background. Oh, sorry. Oh, with- no, it's fine. The kids oh, are <laughs> oh, listen, I love, I love that COVID has normalized that we're working from home. We're exactly. We have a cat, we have a dog. We, I mean, I've had my husband's go behind my husband's, my husband go behind me like this. I'm like, hon, we can see you. Like, we can see, goes, yeah. oh, sorry. Totally. I'm like, yeah. it's, it, I think I love the normalization that I know this term is overused, but we bring our whole self to work, right? Yes. You are here as an incredibly successful entrepreneur, an incredible woman that happens to be a wife, a mother, a stepmother. We can celebrate that on this call. You know, I don't, right. to, I don't want to be with someone that can't acknowledge that part of me. I mean, let's be respectful. I'm not going to have you know, my kids are little in the background, you know, running around in their underwear, although they would have loved to have, you know, literally banging a drum, like that's disrespectful. Right. But, you know, there's a noise. I'm like, oops, that's one of my four kids. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. of course, of course. People like real stuff reason. too these days, right? It's all about like, I, wanna, I actually want to see like, the reason. real stuff that's so, going on. So even if, you know, when I tell people too, because when I work with business people, most of them are in relationships. And I'm like, look, you, you do the best you can. Even if you and your ex are struggling, you can struggle from a place of empathy, from yeah. a place of love and say, listen, I'm really sorry. Like, you know, your dad and I got our wives crossed. We're supposed to take vacation. It's not, and, and just, Be honest with them while having a boundary and not spilling, just like you were saying in business, the same same thing. But what's been the biggest surprise for you being married to another entrepreneur that you're like, hmm, didn't see that coming? Ah. The surprise... It's, it's funny. Like there's the, the interesting thing is that you think, I think as an entrepreneur, you think no other entrepreneurs could possibly like, do they go through what I go through? Do they have, you know, this pressure or stress or are they thinking as much with like a ton of ideas and all these things like all the time. And being with an entrepreneur, you see that that's not, that is, that is normal. You know what I mean? That is, you have tons of ideas all the time. You do as much as you try to, um, have your team help. There's times where your plate is built. Like it just keeps building because, because you have so many ideas, you're trying to execute on so many things at the same time you get overwhelmed. And I always figured Oh, other people are doing it better than, than me. Like they have it figured out and I, and I just can't. Yes. yes. Like they, they know how to keep it over. We're entrepreneurs. We're always over. And we just are. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like, it's okay. (laughs) You know what I mean? Because even when you do have those moments where you're like, I've got all these people, as soon as you clean off the plate and have people helping you as entrepreneurs, you somehow figure out how to load it back up again. (laughs) So, well, you know, that's because we're a little bit of a control freak. Yeah. Right? You know, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'm i with you. Like I start to do stuff. I'm like looking at the invoice and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, that is not my unique gift. Right. I have one, maybe two unique gifts. That's it. And there's so much other crap involved with running a business. I was telling you before we came on, like I need to get a new person to help with, I can't even describe the help I need with the person behind the scene, doing my website, loading my course, like whatever. I got, I, I, I don't know. Like it, totally. it you might as well speak to me. I have no clue. Yep. So, so here's where the other variable comes in, right? Trust, right? So trust more and more that the trust doctor that I work with trust, you cannot be successful. However you want to define successful in any area of your life without trust. How do you develop trust? You develop trust because you have to allow, first of all, you have to trust yourself and then allow yourself to be vulnerable so that others will trust you. So how do you go? That's okay. How do you negotiate all that? With Two kids of your own, two stepchildren, 
a business that is just exploding and another entrepreneur? How do you, how do you negotiate all that? <sighs> I was actually, it's funny that you bring this up because I was just thinking about this like yesterday or the day before. And I was thinking how important it is to have like agreements, you know, and, and not talking about the four agreements. I do love that book, but mm-hmm. agreements and, and understanding, because if you can have an agreement of, you know, uh, during, you know, during this time, um, we, we don't, we're not talking about work. We're just going to, you know, be with each other or can we, or having an agreement of like, Hey, by the way, for the next week, I'm going to be super busy. So I'm going to need uh, extra help with this, this, and that, like talking about it ahead of time and having some type of an agreement, meaning like an understanding of what to expect. Then when things get a little out of whack, it's not, it's not so jolting or upsetting because it's not out of the blue. And I think if we can, it's, it's almost like, it's like preparation or I don't know what the right word is, but I kept thinking of the word like agreement, you know, like, cause you can easily get into that place where it's like, um, Hey, we haven't like really had a date in like two weeks, you know, and now I'm feeling upset. And so I'm going to give you the cold shoulder or I'm just, you know, whatever it is like that, that kind of like tension develops. Whereas if you have this agreement of like, Hey, next two weeks are going to be super, super busy. Can we plan something out in the future this way? Mm -hmm. There's no need to get feelings hurt. Doesn't mean you don't miss each other or that you're not craving that time together. It's just like, but we have this agreement and we know this and it's nothing to be taken personally. So So I'll tell you the word that's coming to mind as you're speaking. Yeah. Communication. Yes. (laughs) It's it's all communication. And and I'm, and I'm remember when I wrote both of my books, I can remember saying to my husband and to my kids, I'm like, look, mommy, I need to do this at, I don't know how I did it at night after they would go to bed. And then I would need some of, you know, some time on the weekend and, and I would let them know. And then we would work around it. My husband would be supportive. The kids would be supportive. Right. But it was that understanding that my work at this moment in time is taking more time than you. Yes. It doesn't mean they're more important. It's more important. It doesn't mean it's a priority. But at this moment in time, it needs more of my time. We will get back to it. Like, yeah. like, and the communication must be crystal clear. And the agreement is based upon the clarity of the communication. Because sometimes you communicate and it's misinterpreted. And then hand in hand with that are the boundaries. Yep. Right. The boundary, the boundary issues. Like, you know, like I would work on a Saturday, say nine to 12 and friends would be like, I'm trying to call you. I'm like, I told you nine to 12 on Saturdays. I'm writing my book, but I knew you were there. Couldn't you just pick up? No, my phone is off. It's in the car. It's not with me, that kind of thing. And then you're just reminding and they're like, can't you just. And so when you have somebody that you trust and you trust each other and you trust that the priority will shift back to that. Yes. Yep. I think that's yeah. what's going on. But the good thing is you are missing the time together, right? Yes. And, oh, always. Yeah. And it's so know, funny because we'll always say like, if there's ever, if there's ever a, you know, we don't, not, not a fight, but like a grumpiness or whatever it is, it's always because of lack of connection, lack of time together. It's like one person's mad at the other for not making it a priority to spend time Mm -hmm. together. You know, it's Mm -hmm. usually, it's not about a thing, you know, it's usually, that's what it is. Well, and I tell people all the time, there's, especially with work, there's not a time management issue. It's a priority management issue. Yes. My husband will tell you, I am the queen of that. I have time for what I want to get done. Yes. And if I don't want to get it done, I don't have the time. Yep. And, and believe me, like, you know, there's so many other things that can fit in. Oh, wait, I got 15 minutes. Oh, I got that email. Oh, I got to touch base with that person I haven't spoken to in 27 years. Well, let me clean out that drawer that I haven't opened in 10 years. All of a sudden, it's a priority. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so tell us, give us a little glimpse into your day. Oh, so... <laughs> 
My days have changed a lot in this past because we've, 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 we're doing so many new things within the business. So my days, my days have changed and are a little bit more hectic than I would like, but typical day, I'm probably up at around 6am, at least by 6am in the morning, I'm taking the dog out, (laughs) do a little potty break, feed the dog, making my coffee. And probably within the hour, everybody else is getting up. Sometimes, sometimes Mike gets up with me. Um, right after, but usually I'm the first one up. Always got to have my coffee, and usually I'll I'll listen to something that's something positive gets me in a good mindset, and then mm-hmm. I am pretty much I'm like straight straight to work. I'm like doing all of the like task little things that I have to get done, which usually take like a half an hour to an hour, making sure, you know, day is organized. What do I have? Just kind of a quick glance of like, what am I in store for, for the day? And then my days literally are, you know, it's doing, it's doing a podcast like this. It's might be doing some type of leadership meeting with my team. Um, and then a lot of my days are working on marketing stuff. So it's like working with my marketing team on like offers, looking at emails, working with my copywriters, you know, what, what do we, what's, what are we working on right now? What needs to get done? And I usually have like a list each day of the things that like, this would make it a super productive day if these items were done. And Mm -hmm. I'm a lot, sometimes I'm like jumping in between different things, you know, like I, as much as I'm like, okay, I should have this on do not disturb and just like focus on this one task. The ADD in me is like, Oh, there's my slack. Oh, there's this, Oh, there's that. And I'm like going all over the place. And then I have to like center myself again. And then, um, usually if I haven't done it in the morning at some point in the day, whenever I can get it in, I usually don't let a day go by without a workout. I've got to get my, my workout in. And so we you don't, you don't have a set time. I, I used to, but then I start to sometimes, usually I'll try to get it done like first thing in the morning, but sometimes there's things that are like scheduled or with, with kids that are, that have come up. And so it'll end up being in the afternoon. And then honestly, my afternoons are like running kids around, you know, doing like there's, there's dance, there's martial arts, there's yeah, exactly. All that kind of stuff. So and then it's like, finally, you know, check in, check in with the husband during the day. What are we going to do tonight? Is there a plan or are we going to make dinner? Just something to get excited about. He's very big on, you know, wanting to know what we're going to do so that he can look forward to it and be excited. Whether that's like, he's like, I'm going to barbecue, I'm going to cook dinner or let's go, let's go somewhere. Just mm-hmm. something that, that, you know, kind of makes you feel like, okay, end of the day, we're going to wind down, spend time together. And that's- and that's that like that, that's his refuge. Yeah. Yes. And that's what days have been like as of, as of late, <laughs> it's been pretty busy. <laughs> okay. So I could, I could, I could talk to you all day, all day. I know, by the way, I know. I'm going to see you in November. Will you be yes. at the, yes, okay. absolutely. Yes. I will be there. So listen, the summer and I met. In I need to book my hotel too. That reminds me. <laughs> oh, you, you bet. I'll talk to you about that later. Um, yeah. We met in Phoenix at uh, Joe Polish's Genius Network annual event, and she and Jen Hoody, who I mentioned earlier on this podcast, yes. set up an incredible, incredible dinner at Oak and Almond. Is that what it was called? Oak and Ash? Uh, yes. Oak and Ash. Yeah. Oak and Ash. It was delicious um, so and, and the best hostess in the world. So um, one more question. Yes. What's the last book that you reread and why? Ooh, the last book that I reread. The last book that I, <laughs> is probably, hold on. I'm going to get, I'm going to get the name right here. It's on my, it's on my. It's so good. I can't remember the title. I know. Well, I do that a lot <laughs> is that I, that I reread um, books, but it's right it was okay. You last. So I reread, um, faster than normal by Peter Shankman. And okay. oh. I reread it because yeah. And it's all about the, like the ADD mind. Right. That's and why you can relate. So, so, yep. And so somebody from genius network told me to read it. So I read it and then I ended up saying, you know, there's some things in there. I want to go back, you know, I want to listen to And so I listened to it again on audible. Great. And it I was, lied. I have one more question. I have yes. one more question. What is the one song you can't live without? 
Oh, okay. It is Dancing in the Moonlight by King Harvest. And Morrison? Oh, King. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you can't live without it because? It, it like, it's my go-to for years and years and years and years. It's like, it's just, you know, some songs just put you in that state of like free, amazing, good vibration. I can see you dancing naked to it. I have to tell you. Totally. I'm sure I have many <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like right. it's, it's the best <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you to dance to it when i see you next okay all right i will i have no problem find at all. out more about you where would you like them to go to learn more about the draw shop you all your fantastic yes. offerings would you like them the to draw go? shop is the draw shop.com for me you can go to summer felix Mulder on social media all the social channels um and i'm on linkedin instagram facebook all the places. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. We also do, my husband and I also do a podcast on uh, blended families. It's called everything always, which you were a guest on. And then I also have a podcast, um, video marketing secrets. And, um, uh, that's, we've got some really cool guests all about video marketing and how to implement it into your business. Awesome. Well, thank you. This was so much fun. I really could have talked to you forever. Thank I know. You. I thank can't wait to so see you. Much. Thank you so much. Same here. And that concludes today's podcast episode of The Trust Doctor, Restoring Trust and Enriching Significant Relationships. And as promised, Summer took you for a ride. So make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to The Trust Doctor podcast. And until next time, be well.